It's social distancing at the chamber, the Friday edition of Happy Hour with Hammer. My name is Garrick Taylor, joined as always by the CEO of the Arizona Chamber, Glenn Hammer. Glenn, it's the end of a long week, end of a rough week, but we end with a little bit of good news. Uh, this morning, we learned that uh, we had expected an unemployment rate to hit a whopping 20%. Uh, some silver lining here. It's at 13.3, which I know that nobody's happy about, but it's a heck of a lot better than 20. Garrick, it's the first time in a long, long, long time where a surprise has turned to be good news. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the trajectory is, is, is positive. Uh, the, the Hill had a great story on these numbers, and I, I love the quote that it has from Mark Sandy, uh, a Moody chief economist for, for Moody's uh, analytics. It indicates the recession is over and the recovery has begun. Uh, so th that, that was just uh, very, very important. We need to make sure people get back to work, they get to back work safely. Uh, this indicates that on the jobs front, we're, we're, we're on a very good path right now. Uh, you're pretty bullish, but at the outset of all of this, you had stressed, as well as uh, job creation advocates around the country, keep employees, whenever, impossible, whenever possible, tied to employers and payrolls. And we're uh, seeing why that's so important. Well, you know what? The the fact is is that uh, the the Congress and the administration de deserve a lot of credit for uh, very very quickly, particularly in Washington standards, passing four or five different major relief packages uh, that dealt with all the different aspects of the of the global pandemic. And really, a centerpiece here was the Paycheck Protection Program. And we know Garrick in Arizona alone. Uh, I can't recall what the latest numbers are, but we're talking probably north of now $9 billion worth of forgivable loans for, I don't know, for over 70,000 or so Arizona mm -hmm. businesses, small businesses, by the way, that have been able to uh, get those forgivable loans and keep a lot of people on payroll. So those unemployment numbers would be much, much, much worse if not for the effective response. So uh, policy does matter, and you know the, we, we could all be critical. It's a pastime in this country yeah. to be critical of the United States Congress. But when you take a look at where we are going uh, economically, uh, you'd have to say that uh, Congress did a lot of good uh, in, in, in what could have been a, a collapse of our economy. Uh, that takes us to issue number two, which is the program itself, the Paycheck Protection Program. Uh, you had heard from around the country, small businesses saying, uh, this program, well-intentioned, it still needs some tweaks, though, because we live in a state, I'm not talking about Arizona, but you might live in a state where you qualified for PPP funding, and yet you were still under a stay-at-home order and couldn't get back to work, and now you're, you have a repayment date breathing down your neck. Congress did something about that this week. Yeah, and, and in an almost unanimous fashion and in sort of strong bipartisan fashion, uh, what the Congress did and the president today signed it just a few hours ago, is that uh, it allows, uh, it, it changes the Treasury rule that required 75% of the loan to go towards uh, payroll. It relaxes that to 60%. That's important because a lot of uh, businesses, particularly restaurants and those in the lodging industry, have uh, higher costs in other areas that are allowable, uh, such as, such as uh, rent and utilities. Uh, it extends the time period to use the funds from eight to 24 weeks. That's a big, big change. And it, expend, it extends the deadline to rehire workers uh, to, the, to the end of the calendar year. So uh, businesses can make sure they're ready to go. And I believe it also increases the uh, repayment uh, term from uh, two years to, to five. So three or four really big changes, uh, sensible changes. And again, I want to thank uh, the United States Congress and the administration. They listened to chambers across America and they responded. And I want to give a special big uh, shout out to the U.S. Chamber. Uh, I'll tell you, Neil Bradley, who's the, uh, the, the, the chief lobbyist on Capitol Hill, the, the for the U.S. Chamber has just been doing a phenomenal job of listening to the business community, 
uh, working with the United States Congress and getting changes that are literally saving hundreds of thousands, if not millions of jobs. The, uh, this reform uh, is an important one for all the reasons you mentioned, but there's also an aspect of this program where we're building the airplane as we're flying it. At the outset of this program, I remember you had cited some of your frustration about these percentage <laughs> limits on what had to be applied to payroll, which you and I have looked at the bill. It's not in the bill. So I'm glad that we're getting closer to congressional intent here. It, you know, it was never in the bill. I understand why Treasury Sec Secretary Mnuchin did it. It is called the Paycheck Protection Program. But for a lot of businesses to keep any employee or employees on the payroll, they, have, they needed to receive that, that loan. And, and the beautiful thing about this change, I, I would have probably preferred it to go further, but uh, that 60% seems to hit a sweet spot that it's going to give businesses more flexibility so they could survive. And it, it should be helpful as we uh, continue to make progress on the overall uh, unemployment numbers. Now, I, I do want to say that, you know, speaking of Neil Bradley, uh, the U.S. Chamber put out an important release that while the news is certainly welcome on the trajectory, and this will connect back to the, uh, the U.S. Chamber's effort to uh, have a national dialogue on, on equality and equity and opportunity for all, is that uh, it was not equal uh, across the board in terms of the employment uh, gains. Uh, you know, th this, is, uh, this is a quote, uh, I believe, from Neil. This is something the U.S. Chamber put out. Uh, you know, today's jobs report is certainly welcome news and is a clear sign that the reopening and recovery is underway. Uh, but if we go on, he, he also says, you know, if, if black Americans had the same participation and an unemployment rate as white Americans, there would be 1.3 million more African Americans in jobs today. And that's not new. Before the pandemic, a growing economy produced record low un unemployment. But even then, uh, if participation and unemployment rates would have been the same for black and white workers, there would have been uh, 842, 500, 842,500 more African Americans in jobs. So, you know, we, we have a lot of work to do. Uh, but we're going to do it. We're going to roll up our sleeves. And, and as the unemployment numbers improve, as the job opportunities are improve, uh, we're, we're uh, committed to being, to listening, to learning, and being part of the solution. Yeah. Um, everyone has to be included in this recovery. Uh, otherwise, it's not a full recovery. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the, the fact, though, that we're, we're moving forward with more jobs uh, being open uh, is, is, is welcome news. And, uh, you know, again, Garrick, you know, we've been doing, I don't know how many shows, we're over 50 shows? We're over 50. I think tonight's 54 or 55. There have been very, very few days where uh, we've, we've, we've had surprise news where we could say, wow, that's, that's 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 something that uh, th that that we could build on, and the market did very well today. So, uh, you know, we're 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 gonna we have a lot of work to do, but uh, it it seems that economically we're on the right path, and the and the key here is going to be to continue to reopen safely. So, you know, that we've talked about it. The ball's in our court. We've you know we've social distancing and, and making sure that the proper uh, personal protection equipment and workers are safe and right. uh, consumers feel safe, you know, all that. We're still in a global pandemic, unfortunately. You know, maybe there is a segment three here. We haven't talked about the likelihood of the legislature going back into a special session, but you and I assume it's gonna happen the last, in the next couple of weeks. Um, Something that we've talked about before is that growing economies are good for everyone. You need tax revenues for governments to meet their core responsibilities and to offer, if, there's, if you are an advocate for expanded government, you still need a healthy economy to do that. Now, if we're gonna bring the legislature back into a special session to have to calibrate around new revenue figures, wouldn't we like any cuts to be as minimal as possible? in this time and if you're if how do we do that with a healthy economy so this recovery is good for everyone whether you're at a state level a municipal level or you're a, a congressional observer uh, 
that, that's, that's a great point because we know when JLBC or Joint Legislative Budget Committee and others modeled this, there was basically a $500 million swing either way right. in terms of you know, up to a $1.5, $1.6 billion deficit or as low as maybe $500 million. Right. Uh, this gives us hope that, that, the, that on, on that area will we'll, uh, be on the lower range. We're certainly, again, it's nothing is, you can't, you can't take anything for granted or take that to the bank, but, but, but you're right. And Garrick, I believe also if on the federal and state level, we're able to get good liability reform as people uh, re-enter uh, normal economic activity, uh, that'll be helpful as, as, as well. So we don't have businesses that are set back, even though they're doing everything they possibly can to keep workers and, and customers safe. Absolutely. Well, a difficult week in the nation's history, but uh, this country's best days are always in front of it. Um, you know, we are uh, looking back at the, uh, uh, the, <laughs> the passing of Ronald Reagan, a lot of tweets you've seen on social media about that today. And in his farewell to the American people, he talked about uh, the sunshine that lies ahead. So uh, perhaps on an optimistic note, we close out this week. Well, uh, I get shivers when you, whenever you talk about uh, the Gipper. Uh, Dutch. That, uh, Dutch. Uh, uh, it, we're, we are the, the shining city on the hill. We are the uh, greatest country that, that the world has ever produced. But we can and must be better and, and greater. We're good people. We have a lot of issues we need to work through. Uh, this is a moment of change. And we're going to we're going to meet that uh, we're going to meet that challenge. Absolutely. He's Glenn Hammer. I'm Garrett Taylor. We will see you next week.